Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about the mean, median, and mode. Mean, median, and mode are three common units of measurement that are used to describe central tendency of a set of data. So they're sort of a summary measures that attempt to describe the whole set of data with a single value that represents the middle or center of its distribution. So before getting into the definition of mean, I want to talk about the definition of summation notation, which looks like this. It looks a little bit intimidating, but what this means, this symbol means sum or summation of xi's from i equals 1 to n. So i, we start with 1, so x1 and x2 and x3 and so on up to xn, and we add all of those numbers up. So that's all that means is you're going to have a set of numbers, and let's say you have 10 numbers, you're going to, if you see this notation, n would be 10 in that case, you're going to have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 and so on, all the way up to x10. I want you to get comfortable with this notation because you're going to see this when you're dealing with different formulas in statistics. Now let's look specifically at the definition of mean, median, and mode when you have a set of data. So the example we're going to start with, we have uh, math test scores for a group of 10 students as given. We're going to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. The most important measurement of central tendency is going to be mean. So I'm going to give you the formula and I'm going to show you how that works with this set of scores. Mean is going to be the most useful measure of central tendency. And we can think of it as being like the center of gravity or the balancing point of all of that data. It's also called the average. And the way that we calculate it, first of all, this is the notation for mean, the x with a bar above it. And it's going to be the sum of all the x values divided by the total number of x values. So in other words, it's going to be x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on up to xn divided by n. Let's take a look at how that looks with this example. We were calculating this mean. Remember, each of these values represents an x value. So that could be x1, this could be x2, and so on. And this value would be x10. So we simply add everything up. So our numerator will be the sum of all of those scores. And we know that because we have 10 scores, n is equal to 10. When we calculate the sum, we get 704. And when we divide, we get a mean of 70.4. So that's going to be the most useful measure of central tendency for our data. However, there are two other measures of central tendency. So let's take a look at those. Before I talk about um, median and mode, I forgot to mention that when you have your set of data and you're finding the mean, the standard practice is to go one more decimal place than what the data is. So in this case, we knew all of the numbers or the test scores to the nearest unit. Therefore, I rounded to one decimal place when I gave the mean. Okay, the next measure of central tendency is median, and that refers to the number in the middle. When you have an odd number of test scores, it's going to be easy to see what the middle one is once you arrange those numbers in increasing order. However, when it's even number, it's a little bit trickier, but what we're going to do in either case is arrange these test scores starting from the lowest and going to the highest. Once these numbers are arranged in increasing order, the middle, there's five numbers below the middle and five numbers above. So the middle is going to be in between the fifth and the sixth number. In order to find what that number is, we just take the mean or the midpoint of those two numbers. So the median will therefore be 67 plus 76 divided by 2, which is 71.5. The middle number or the middle of the two middle numbers. Lastly, we have mode, and that refers to the number that occurs most frequently. You may not have a mode, or you may have more than one. In this case, when we look at these scores, we can see that 76 occurred twice, 
and all of the other scores only occurred once. So the mode in this case would be 76. Next, I wanna take a look at finding these three measures of central tendency when we have data that's arranged in a frequency distribution rather than single values like they were in this example. In our next example, we have some data for 149 foxes. So let's say there are female foxes in a certain region and a biologist wanted to know the litter size for each of those females. So rather than writing down each of those litter sizes, so there'd be 149 numbers to work with, we can organize that information in what's called a frequency distribution. So the one column will be the category, which in this case is the litter size. And then the other column will be the number of foxes that had that litter size. So there were five that only had one pup. There were 15 that had two pups. There were 27 that had three pups and so on. Now let's take a look at how we find the mean, median and mode when our data is presented in this form. In order to calculate the mean, we have this formula, which looks a little intimidating, but it's the sum of the products of the x values, which are the litter sizes, times the frequency values, divided by the total number or the sum of the frequencies. So that means it would be x1, f1, plus x2, f2, and so on. divided by F1 plus F2 and so on up to Fn. So in this example, if I want to calculate this mean, I take X1 times F1, so 1 times 5, plus X2 times F2, so 2 times 15, and so on. So there were 27 foxes that had a litter of 3, so 3 times 27 and so on. And in the denominator, I add up all the frequencies. Be careful, it's the frequencies you add up, it's not the litter size. So five plus 15 plus 27 and so on. And that should work out to be 149. The numerator is 608. So the mean for this set of data would be 4.1. Now it's a little tricky finding the median because we're not arranging all of our numbers in order. So if we have 149 pieces of data, the 75th piece, once it's in order, would be the one in the middle. So what we're looking for is the 75th number. Easiest way probably to do that is just start totaling. So we've got five plus 15 is 20, so my first 20 numbers there, and then 27 would be 47 here. So my 47th number is in this category, and then this would be 47 plus 42 would be 89. So I know my 75th number is going to be in this category, would be litter size of four. So my median would be four. So you find what category your middle number would be in. The mode is easy to calculate when you have your data listed in a frequency distribution. It's gonna be the one with the largest frequency. And we can see that the largest frequency is with four pups in a litter. So the mode would be four. Now let's take a look at an example of a frequency distribution with group data. So this next example says the mass in kilograms of 98 randomly selected foals is given. Now rather than a specific mass, there's a range. So a mass from 50 to 52 kilograms, there were two foals out of that sample. From 53 to 55, there were 14, and so on. We're going to use the same formula that we used in the last example. However, we have to find the middle number or the midpoint for each of these range of values and use that in our calculations. So I'm just gonna do that here. So in order to find the midpoint, we just add them up and divide by two or look to see what the middle number is. In this case, it's 51. 
add them up and divide by 2, the nine number is 54, and so on. And we're going to use that number as our x and this number as our frequency, and we're basically going to ignore the range of values when we calculate the mean. So for the mean, I'm going to take the sum of the x values times the frequencies, 51 times 2, and so on, 54 times 14. Then I'm going to divide by the sum of the frequencies, which I know should be 98. And when I calculate everything, I get a mean of 59.3 kilograms. So same formula as before, but we needed one number to use, so we find the midpoint. To find the median, there's 98 numbers or 98 fools, so we want to find the mass of the one in the middle. If we were to arrange it in order, well, we have an even number, so we're looking for the middle between the 49th and the 50th full if I were to arrange them in order. So I start here, there's two total here, 16 here, 41 here. Okay, I want, I'm looking for the 49th and 50th, so this would be 72. So my 49th and 50th would be in this range. So the median would be 59 to 61 kilograms. And the mode would be the most popular, like what mass appeared most often, and that would be this category here, which is also 59 to 61 kilograms. The mean in a grouped data situation is not going to be really accurate because we don't know the exact values of all of those masses, but it's going to be our best approximation of the mean. In my next video, I'm going to talk about measures of dispersion, specifically range, variance, and standard deviation. So I'll see you then.